TBS's show Clipped. Her first crush was on Stephanie Tanner from Full House. That is hilarious to me. What is her name? Jody Sweet? Oh my god, there's no one coming for Tazy. And once her mother accidentally farted to the beat of the theme song from the show Cops. Hashtag true story. Here's my girl, Deanna Reason over with the three step program. down too fast, my legs would fly up and my knees would hit me in the face <laughs> at separate times. <laughs> so in the hallways of Bates Middle School, I was not popular. In fact, I would go so far as to say I was the least popular person on the academic decathlon team. <laughs> Which should tell you everything. eighth grade into ninth grade into a new school into high school I was like this is it this is my big chance <laughs> I was like this is like Rachel Lee Cook and she's all that level of big chance <laughs> I decided that when I got to high school I was going to be popular and I thought about it all summer and I said there's three ways I'm going to be popular I'm going to wear designer clothes <laughs> I'm going to wear makeup and I'm gonna get a man. <laughs> and just so you know, I wasn't allowed to do any of these things at the age of 14, but I was like, I'm in high school now, I'm a free bitch. <laughs> so my high school, Renaissance High School, we had this special two week orientation uh, for all the freshmen that were coming in. They would come for two weeks and they would get to know where their biology class was and where their locker was and where that corner in the gym where everybody got hand jobs was. <laughs> I'm not kidding, the girl on the tour was like, that's the hand job corner. <laughs> and while we were passing it, I was like, if I play my cards right, <laughs> I'ma get me a hand job. <laughs> It never occurred to me to give no hand jobs. <laughs> and it's crazy when I think about it, because I had never even like kissed a boy, but I was like, I can figure hand jobs out. I was probably just gonna like hit it a bunch. Of <laughs> that would be it. But I was like, if I if I play my cards right, I can really do this. So because my mom wouldn't buy me designer clothes or makeup, I did the next best thing, which is I went to the school's lost and found. <laughs> and bingo, because I found me half a two of baby pink lipstick <laughs> and a men's size large V-neck Calvin Klein shirt. And I'm, I'm like, I weigh now. I'm not going to say how much I weigh because we in LA, but still, I'm not afraid of it. <laughs> I weigh pounds. But at the time, I weighed like 88 pounds, which made me a children's size medium at best. <laughs> but it, Detroit beggars ain't choosers, so I was like, this will work, thank you very much. And then I, had to, I just had to figure out how to get a boyfriend. So I had to choose a boy in my class, and I chose this guy named Darren Brown. And I, like I said, I, I wasn't into boys. I, I hadn't been doing nothing. I didn't really know what to do with boys, but I picked him because he looked the most like Eric Carter. <laughs> and he didn't really look like Eric Carter because he was black, but I was like, well, <laughs> So at the end of this two week program, we were all going to a museum in Ohio, Ohio called Cosi Science Museum. And everybody was like, we going to a museum across state lines? This bus about to get crazy. So I was like, this is it. This is when I'm gonna implement my plan. I'm gonna talk to Darren. 
So we get on the bus, and I was like, okay, okay, I'm gonna play it cool, I'm gonna play it cool. And I played it cool for the whole bus ride from Michigan to Ohio. I ain't talked to him once. I sat in the back and read the first five chapters of I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. It made no sense. But when we got there and we got to the museum, I was like, everybody in fact was like, this is the coolest place we have ever been. And it was, it was interactive, and there was a climbing wall, and there was uh, this thing that you could swing a baseball and it would time how fast you were and compare it to major league baseball players. And the only thing that sucked about this museum was they had one of those electrified glass balls with the electricity in the middle that made your hair stand up. But we was all black. <laughs> experience right privilege. <laughs> but I was like, I still gotta do this because school's gonna start tomorrow, so I gotta get on this. So I put on my shirt in the bathroom, I put on my lipstick, and when we got back on the bus, everybody was talking because we were all so excited about the museum. So I sat right behind Darren and everybody was talking, and Darren was wearing a pair of those ski goggles on his head. You know how people used to wear ski goggles on their head? You know how people did that in Detroit where ain't nobody ski or nothing? That was the closest we got to a veil or whatever. But his were tinted yellow, and I was like, I'm gonna look so good with yellow eyes. So. I went up, so when everybody was talking, I leaned over my seat and I said to him, um, hey Darren, can I wear your ski goggles? And he said, yes. And so I reached over the seat and I was like, I'm gonna do it just like in the movies. And I kind of caressed his face. <laughs> and my eyes looked at his for the first time, because we had never really looked at each other. And he locked eyes with me, and he said, I can see your titties. <laughs> and that big ass Calvin Klein shirt. And that was like, everybody on the bus was like, everybody freaked out and they were laughing and cracking up and I was crushed. And I started crying and I dropped down on my knees like I couldn't even sit on that seat no more which was the perfect thing to do. Because those motherfuckers were so loud that the driver of the bus was like, huh, and janked the bus over into a cement medium. And all them kids that would be as shitty as hell went flying into the seat in front of them. And Darren's shitty ass mouth was open and he bit his tongue so hard he could not talk for the whole rest of the ride back to Michigan. And in any other city, there would have been lawsuits, press would have been involved. But in Detroit, the driver was like, y'all okay? what Darren said. And to this day, I am so fucking gay.